Brilliant. Well, I want to throw it open to you guys and find out what you know. What what are you curious about and interested in? And yeah, what what questions do you have to ask? Mm -hmm. Yes, Lily. Mm -hmm. Firstly, just wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Beth Allen, for your beauty and your courage and your incredible creativity. Thank you. Um, <laughs> do do you find like by creating and performing work like this that it's part of your healing process and do you feel that that is also happening a, a ripple effect for other people not just in the audience but like collectively mm. but, like when we heal ourselves we're also healing the collective and especially like for me the power of performance is that like you're saying, it is a collaborative thing, even if there's oh. one performer on stage, because we are all giving our attention to that. So what the focused attention of a group of people in a specific way creates an amazing, powerful energy. Mm. Do, do you feel that you're sort of a conduit <coughs> for some kind of healing process? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, yes. No, yes. Yes. Um, yes. So t for the beginning part of the question, I'm going to go on stage just how my brain works. Um, it is absolutely and has been a massive part of my healing process. And as I mentioned in the show, that is not linear. <laughs> so it's also sometimes felt like it's taken me back. And I've been working on this version of the show for the last four years, three years, four years. And one of the biggest journeys with that has been um, trying to find that line between Am I healing myself or am I re-traumatizing myself? And earlier versions of the work, and this was something I talked a lot about with, with New Pathways and with my team, um, like earlier versions of the work included kind of a lot more um, descriptive content around my actual experiences. So there were other versions of the work that had uh, content in that was received very well by the audiences that I shared it with and people said it was very powerful, but it, I realized that actually it was not very safe for me. So it's been a real arc of like, ultimately, yes, I feel literally feel better now than I've felt maybe ever, which is fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up in the day and I was like, oh my god, it's really good. <laughs> it's really nice. So yeah, uh, massively, massively, and, and the getting there has also involved, which is then part of learning how to heal, right? It's involved going way over all my boundaries and then going, oh, okay. Bit far, <laughs> retreat, <laughs> um, which is part of you know part of the healing is going around in some circles and you get a bit lost over there and then you come back and then you go up there a bit and you come down. So yeah, it, it's definitely I'm definitely healing myself making it. Next part of the question, um, and then in terms of like other people's <coughs> healing, yeah, like definitely it's like through working with the people at New Pathways through my team, like we talked about how how it's affecting all of us and. We've cried lots together, and there's, there's definitely waves. There are definitely waves, and the audiences I've spoken to for all the R and D versions of the show have definitely said that. So yeah, I do like um, some part of me like is like I don't know if I can own that, <laughs> but I can and I will. Yes, Lily. Yes, <laughs> I think it is. Can I yeah, mate. Get on there. I'm from the, the outside. <laughs> slightly more zoomed out. I feel like there's a no healing. A societal healing mm. that mm. Beth Ann is like shining a light of like I call bullshit, mm -hmm. and it's like <laughs> oh thank you someone's called bullshit, mm -hmm. and and like making people question. So I, and I've kind of when I'm like telling people about the show, I'm using the words thought provoking because it is it's like making you rethink the narratives and yeah if just the little bits of threads can come out of that to think actually you know why are we why are we doing the things we're doing why are we responding to the you know, mental health, etc., sexual violence, and so like, so, yeah, and then the, these real take-home messages around, like, looking after each other and being connected. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a, there is a bit of healing, which is kind of why the show has to be out there. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think that... Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I've said so many words. But, um... I think just literally now, like, it was just while you were talking, I was thinking, the biggest answer that to that question is, yeah, like, we're all here in the room together, you know? And, like, especially for me as a performer, it's just, it's been COVID for however long. 
and like this is healing like just being here in a room with other actual human beings without masks. and without masks and with connection and emotions and like that yeah like that for me that's like gold dust like that's this is healing like, yeah right you don't want <laughs> yeah i'm just it might have already been said, but in a different way, just that art is activism. Mm. You know, there are many different ways we can take action out in the world. And culturally, there is a huge amount of trauma. There's a lot of magic and beauty too, but there is a huge amount of trauma. And the only way we're going to stop those perpetual cycles is by speaking about it, is by calling it out is by using creative ways to address it, to share it, to be in connection. And then we can recreate a different story. And how we do that has to be carefully managed. It's this kind of like titration. It's like a little bit coming back, a little bit out there. You know, real care, and that's why we need each other to do that. Can I add something there as well? Mm. I just want to say thank you to you, because it takes a lot of personal power and a lot of personal strength to do what you do. Um, and I remember you saying to me actually that the service user group helped you to tell your story because you felt like uh, initially this piece was going to be more about other people's stories as well as your own and actually then give you the strength to do your own story. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that, that's what you're doing, you know, by telling one person's story and by everybody <laughs> listening to one person's story, you're actually listening to the collective. Mm. Because like you say, where else do you put your dirty laundry? Where yeah, else do you yeah. Put your so actually, yeah, I'll just say thank you. Yeah, that was a real, um, that was a really beautiful moment actually, I remember when we were talking about that. I had, oh god, it's mad what comes up in your being when you try and do something like this, like, it's like a serious party of internal bullshit, like, <laughs> happens very fast, and one of the biggest things for me was like, I don't have the right, I don't have the right to, to do this, like, who am I to stand on the stage and tell my story, like, <coughs> There are loads of people that have suffered more than me, like, who am I to take up this space? Like, there are people that need this space. There were so many, like, literally, like, there were days with these guys where I was, like, <laughs> completely, like, paralyzed. It was just, like, I can't. And, and yeah, like, having, having other people really validate that it doesn't matter, actually, like, this scale of, like, suffering, it doesn't matter. Like, my story is my story, and it, and it has value, and your story has value. And, and that group was, yeah, so important for that, for, for feeling like, yeah, I have the right to, to tell my story and take up that space. And and that was, yeah, a real gift. And also a huge part of the healing. Yeah. You know, because it is the, the silence. The internal in silencing, so yeah. It's like when we can go out there and share it, there's a massive amount of, literally, as Bethan's put it in the show, like rebirthing. Mm -hmm. And the more we do that, the more we just step into a new person where our past doesn't have to have that kind of debilitating power on us. So yeah, if you can be doing it and inspiring other people to, then yeah. you know we need that. We all need that. Can I ask a question, Beth? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Just quickly, um, is is there a difference in terms of looking after yourself as as you, sort of mm -hmm. separating yourself from the artist, or looking after yourself as an artist, and who does? The, the two jobs, if you like, if they are two completely separate things. That's like a jobs. good question. <laughs> um, I think the first thing to say on that is, I'm just learning how to look after myself, yeah. <laughs> which is an interesting journey. I'm getting good at it, actually. It's gonna look. Um, yeah, they, they, it's a funny one because they are separate, and then they're also not, and it's been quite a dance of like, like looking after me when I'm not making the show definitely looks different. Like, looking after me when I'm not making the show is like, you know, have I eaten some food today? Have I gone outside? Have I had a shower? Have I seen some friends? Have I done some exercise, you know? Like, that, that's one world. <laughs> and then looking after me in the show is like, yeah, a very different thing. It's, it's kind of like, it feels like I've been wrestling, like, Harry Potter-esque demons and monsters and magical, mythical creatures all day every day for the last three months <laughs> it's like so that it requires a very different kind of self-care like it, it was required a lot of it's required a lot of really great humans who who understand i think what's been really important for like self-care as an artist in this is having the right people in the room and and realizing that having the right people in the room means 
having my friends who, who, who trust me implicitly and who I trust implicitly and who I can literally be any version of myself. Like, that's massive. Then also having people with the right skills. So like, Sarah's at, you know, highly skilled knowledge base in relation to trauma and somatic movement. Jess is like massively competent understanding of sexual health and consent and, and boundaries and communication. Like having, having the right people is kind of the fundamental key to self-care as, as an artist and in life, like having the right friends. And the right, um, but yeah, I think there has been a, a difference and, and the main difference has been making sure that, that for the work I've got all the bases that I need covered, like the right skills, the right understanding, the right love, like, and that's kind of been what's made it possible. Because if, if I'd just been in the room with like a normal talented theatre director, it wouldn't have worked because I, you know, I have been getting massively triggered making it. And that there have been times when, when really big stuff's been coming up for me in that process and I've needed people that have got that skill set to, to be able to hold it. Um, does that answer your question? Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I always have that when someone asks me a question and I start answering it. I forget what the question was. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any more questions? Yeah, I'd like to ask a question. Um, I was really interested in, you know, the nudity and the economy of the gays because it's still a trap. We're still sexualising you. We're still looking at a beautiful woman. Yeah. And that's really hard to get out because you are a young, beautiful woman. Yeah. So, there's, I mean, I did a lot of nudity work <laughs> in the 90s when I was very young. And people used to accuse me, oh, well, you're a young, beautiful woman. So it's easy for you to get your clothes off. And we are going to feel comfortable because we're used to seeing a lovely body and we're kind of comfortable with it. So it was, it was interesting now uh, from the point of view of me being an older woman mm -hmm. and many years going forward, maybe 30 years since I was doing sort of naked performance art, plus I was also working in the sex industry and being sexualised and I was comparing that kind of economy of the gays because it is quite interesting yeah. how we can all fall into that trap of like still sort of like sexualising you and seeing you as a 